Chapter 6, The Children's Hymn Book In this chapter I relate how an attempt was made to resolve the issue connected with the children being taught to sing hymns containing doctrines contrary to our articles of religion and scripture. I do not think it is possible for anyone to know the anxiety and stress which such matters cause unless they have gone through similar paths. Nevertheless, they had to be faced. Who is sufficient for these things? Truth was at stake and must be preserved. I was certainly alone, for none of the church appeared to stand with me, save my wife. Church Meeting, the 15th of June, 1983 Scripture reading 1 Corinthians 2, verses 20 to 30 this was an interim church meeting seeking to bring to the church the correspondent from Mr. P. Jane, a trustee, and Mr. B. Ramsbott, a minister of the gospel near Luton. After reading the minutes of the last meeting, a matter of the 27th of April clarification was raised by Miss G. Ellis regarding the postscript of these minutes. This postscript has been quoted on the page under this heading. It was asked, What were the views meant? when stated they would prohibit Mr. King from preaching. I explained, the views which prohibited any preacher from teaching at Beerton were that of teaching children God loves them all and the Lord Jesus died for them all. It was felt the paragraph ought to be removed for the sake of future generations and so avoid conveying wrong information. The secretary expressed the purpose of the minutes were to convey a true and accurate account of what actually took place in the meeting, whether the church were in agreement of what transpired or not. It was suggested that since some members could not recall the events related in the postscript taking place, then a clarifying note be made. This was agreed by a vote. It was further motioned the whole postscript be moved, but could not be carried by vote. The chairman resolved the impasse by signing the minutes under the end of the minutes before the transcript. This was done to the satisfaction of the members. It seems evident from these notes that the church did not like what was recorded and sought to clear Mr King of all possible blame. Some wanted the minutes to be tampered with to hide the truth, an evident sign of a natural man in his ways. If they wished to clear Mr King of the charge I had made, then they could have asked him what were his views and doctrines. Mr King, to this day, has never denied any charge of teaching universal love for all children and has never expressed he thought himself wrong when saying to all the children that Jesus had died for them each one. I realised again that the business about voting and women dictating what was or was not to be was wrong. However, come back to the minutes. The secretary informed the church the reasons for the gathering was on two accounts. A. A letter from Mr. Ramsbottom, Minister of the Gospel Luton of Bethel, and Mr. P. Jaynes, the trustee, was to be read to the church, respecting the question of teaching methods used in, in teaching children. B. That a letter from Mr. Dix, Minister of the Gospel from Dunstable, must be read to the church. The two letters from Mr. Ramsbottom and Mr. P. Jaynes were read and the secretary expressed that they both conveyed and supported his views expressed in the Beerton Articles of Faith. After some discussion, the possibility of changing the hymn book used by the children was raised, but the teachers said those hymns which appeared to some as teaching general redemption were always viewed by them as scripture which contained the word all, as in Isaiah 53 verse 6, so on, but in a limited sense. The hymns in particular were There is a green hill far away and Jesus loves me this I know for the Bible tells me so. Miss G. Ellis suggested that the hymns ought to be carefully selected. Mrs. Gurney motioned that the church retain the hymn book and the motion was carried by the vote of the church. The following are letters sent to us from Mr. Ransbottom and Mr. P. Jane to the Church of God at Beerton, beloved friends. Mr. David Clark has visited me and brought your church's request. In the fear of the Lord, I've tried to put down a few thoughts on Sunday schools, which I hope will help. I've sought to avoid personalities and keep to principles. 
desiring your spiritual welfare with Christian love, yours sincerely, Mr. Ramsbottom, to the Church of God at Beerton. A few thoughts on the purpose and running of Sunday School. The purpose of a Sunday School is to teach the Word of God to our children. With the Lord's help, an attempt will be made to put things as simply and clearly as possible, otherwise there is no point in having a Sunday School. Though teaching must be simple, it must be in absolute agreement with the doctrine we believe. Those set out in our trust deed and articles of faith, preached in the pulpit and above all, revealed in the word of God. Great care is needed in the choice of teachers. Obviously, they must be gracious, in complete agreement with the truth we profess, and in my opinion, church members. These four points would seem to be clear. It is on point three and four where there have been a deviation in recent years. Yet, even a hundred years ago, one or two eminent ministers had raised our voice against another gospel being preached to children. Though simple, it must be the same truth, the vital necessity of the new birth, the sinner's complete helplessness. We must be aware of lowering standards in our desire to be simple. It is the same way to heaven for a child as an adult, not, if you love Jesus, you will get to heaven. Thus, it should be evident that Sunday school hymns are in complete agreement with the truth, though in simple language. Some of the popular children's hymns are very beautiful. Some are erroneous. Care must be taken. A great concern must be for the honour of the Lord Jesus Christ out of love for him. I do not see how, believing in particular redemption, we can teach children, Jesus loves me, this I know. Also, some children's hymns speak of all children are lambs. A lamb is a new believer, however young or old. Above all, it is wrong to teach children that Jesus loved them and died for them. Finally, great weakness has crept in in some Sunday schools in the loose appointment of teachers. We hear concerning some girl who shows no sign of grace, well, she'll just take the little ones. To be a Sunday school teacher is, is a solemn thing, a weighty responsibility. May we not deviate from the standard of truth with sentimental views of being loving and kind. Letter from Mr. James, Trustee. To the church, worshipping at Beerton Strict Baptist Chapel, dear friends, as a trustee of your chapel, I concede to your request to comment on certain teaching practices in the Sunday School. My wish is to avoid confrontation, which often results in division, and seek wisdom to write in such a way that may be helpful in resolving your differences. It is very easy for all of us who profess the Lord's name to continue in certain practices and adhere to modes of worship without realising that we may be wide of the mark. On the one hand, it can be argued that God's people will not be ultimately deceived by teaching which suggests a general atonement, because many who have listened to have proved that that doctrine wrong, and their eyes have been opened to see otherwise. On the other hand, to give anyone, whether it be a believer, in an unregenerate state or worldlings, a false sense of security must of necessity be wrong. Many religious bodies are guilty of giving a false hope, so we must be careful not to do the same. I don't think there can be any doubt that the hymn, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, etc., is not a suitable hymn for one of our Sunday schools, because it gives a false sense of security and is not doctrinally correct. I suppose that one of the other hymns in question, There is a Green Hill Far Away, could be sung by a group of true believers and be applicable language. But if, I believe, the general consent interpretation of this is that Christ died for all men, which is not what the Word of God teaches, it is often quite difficult not to put words into people's lips. A mixed congregation cannot with all honesty sing certain hymns. But I say again, it is very difficult. I often fear that my hope is false, but I feel I can say to the honour of my God that, through the Spirit's teaching, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. My prayer 
and desire is that all who enter the door at Beerton Chapel, including the Sunday School, children might know this true foundation. With Christian love, Mr James. Now from the last section of the minutes, and the response, or lack of it from the church, even after I had called my two witnesses to confirm my views, not to myself, but for the benefit of the women, I realise the voting system falls down and that these women ought not to determine the doctrinal practice of the church. What was I to do?